commissioned by our Lord Jesus Christ for the purpose of ministry for effective propagation of the gospel so the instruction that was given in Matthew 28 19 can be achieved Bible says go and make disciples of the nations and that's the ultimate goal Praise the living Jesus. Praise God. Pastor Henry earlier on shared with us how we grow in the spirit to be able to function effectively in the local assembly. The local assemblies have the duty of training ministers. And how do we train ministers? It takes nurturing, feeding them with the word of God guiding them, equipping them through proper teaching and dissemination of the message of the kingdom to give potential ministers focus and direction and purpose. Praise the living Jesus. So that they can fulfill their destinies. So they will be effective in ministry and in service in the kingdom. We also learned that knowledge and understanding of the word of God is key at this level. As ministers would already have studied to show themselves approved. As ministers rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 Pastor Henry also mentioned that potential ministers are supposed to have reached a certain level of maturity to serve at this level. And they will no longer be spiritual babes tossed from one side to the other by every wind of doctrine. Ephesians 4, 14. How do ministers act? They begin to display a sense of maturity because they are no longer spiritual babes. And this maturity is displayed by their focus. Their focus has changed completely. They now learn to reorder their priorities. They now learn to prioritize the things of the kingdom. Praise the living Jesus. They now know that it's all about him the owner, the giver, the source, and the purpose of life. Praise the living Jesus. We are going somewhere. As their priorities change, the things that are pleasing to them also changes. They learn that the first point in their list of agenda is Matthew 6, 33. To seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, knowing that every other thing will now be added. <laughs> Praise the living Jesus. Having attained this desired level of maturity, the next stage for the minister will now be to discover their assignment. Praise God. Basically, what our Lord Jesus Christ came to do was to provide us with leadership. That's the key thing. Leadership to harness the potentials that are inside of us. God has created each and every one of us with gifts. There are things that are peculiar to each and every one of us. And it's only in ministry, it's only under appointed ministers of God that we can be guided gradually to be able to take charge of our destiny, to be able to discover the potentials that are inside of us 
and to be able to stir them up so that they can begin to find expression. Praise God. Basically, what Jesus Christ came to do was to provide leadership, focus, and direction. By raising leaders in the body of Christ, who in turn raise leaders till everybody becomes a leader. Revelation 1, 6 says, He has made us kings and priests. So you begin to wonder, why has he made us kings? Why has he made us kings? And why has he made us leaders? And gradually you find out that basically what people begin to want to ask is that, who am I? Where am I from? What am I supposed to be doing? What am I here for? Praise God. We begin to get answers. To these questions, where are you from? Who are you? To the answer, to answer the question, who am I? Ephesians 2:10 tells us we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works that he had ordained that we should begin to walk in from the foundation of the world. That means even before you were created, he knew you in your mother's womb. Your destiny has been settled even before you came into existence. Praise the living Jesus. He says, where am I from? First Peter 2, 9. First Peter 2, 9. In the times past, we were not a people, but are now the people of God. 2 9, please. 2 9. 2 9. First Peter 2 9. First Peter 2 9. We have been called out of darkness. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So that's where you are from. You are from the kingdom of light. Praise the living Jesus. Why am I here? First Corinthians 4 1 tells us that we are here to be stewards. First Corinthians 4 1, please. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. The concept of stewardship started even. From in the book of Genesis, where Adam created every, where God created everything that was in existence, and put man, he created man. Man didn't have anything, and he gave him the breath of life. Praise God! Some of us have the misconception that we work for our money. When Bible tells us that a man cannot receive anything except it's given to him from heaven above. We don't own anything. God created everything. Created man. 
Man was without form until God put his spirit inside of man. And that's the kingdom spirit we have. We should begin to look at some of these things in perspective so it will change the way we think. Praise the living Jesus. We are stewards of the mysteries of the kingdom. What am I here to do? Titus 2.7 says, I'm here to be a model of good works. You will be a model of good works in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because we are a model of good works, there are things that are expected of us. There are solutions that are to be provided that are unique to each and every one of us. Praise the living Jesus. And that's why Ephesians 4.11 Can we? Ephesians 4.11 The gifts that are inside of us which are there for a particular purpose they are there to expand and extend the frontiers of the kingdom of God. They are not there for your own personal use. 4.11 And he himself gave some to the apostles. That's, we are talking in terms of gifts now. He gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. If you haven't discovered our, our gifts, my prayer today is that before we leave this convention, each and every one of us will discover our spiritual gifts in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because we can only do this. We can only achieve purpose. We can only fulfill destiny if we walk in alignment with God's plan and purpose for our lives. How do we do that? We need to activate the mind of Christ. We need to discover our spiritual identity before we can manifest as true sons of God. There's a you inside each and every one of us that is waiting to find expression. But it needs to be nurtured. It needs to be harnessed. It needs to be discovered before it can find expression. The Holy Spirit will assist all of us in Jesus' name. Now, you'll be, probably be wondering why all these bullet points have been given. It's because there are three kingdoms in existence in the universe. There are three kingdoms in existence. And obviously, we all know that there's a kingdom of God, which we know as the kingdom of light. We know of the kingdom of darkness which is ruled by Satan and his cohorts. And we know of the kingdom of man, the intellectual man, who wants to make himself independent of God, forgetting that in the book of Psalms, in the book of Job, rather, the Bible says the almighty God holds the breath of life of the whole of mankind in his hands. And that typifies the rich man, the rich fool, who said he had worked very hard and had put investments aside and said, well, his soul can jolly well rejoice and enjoy many, many more years in abundance. But the Lord said, oh fool, tonight your soul be required of you. That will not be a portion in Jesus' name. First Corinthians 14.10 Pastor Henry mentioned earlier that there are so many voices in the world today. First Corinthians 14.10 There are so many voices that are speaking. The voice from the kingdom of God the voice from the kingdom of God that speaks peace to
to sons of God. The voice from the kingdom of darkness that speaks fear. And the voice from the kingdom of man not even acknowledging any. Depending on his own wisdom. Forgetting that there is a way that seems right to man. But the end of it is destruction. So we talked about three kingdoms that are in existence. Each of these kingdoms has a government. And each of the governments in these kingdoms are held up by institutions. Praise the living Jesus. We know of institutions, various institutions. We have the educational institutions. We have financial institutions. We have political institutions. We have institutions concerning health. We have media. We have entertainment. We have communication. We have law and justice, agriculture, to mention just a few. Medical institutions, for instance, can be explained in relation to the three kingdoms. We have the kingdom of darkness that sponsors sickness and diseases. Praise God. I want to shorten the lifespan of people. We have the kingdom of man constantly battling the kingdom of darkness, coming up with new inventions every day to try and battle the kingdom of darkness. Yeah, and we have the kingdom of light, the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ that can be brought to bear, superimposed upon all this in terms of divine healing, in terms of knowledge, adequate knowledge of the word. Praise the living Jesus. Educational institutions of man produces intellectuals ruled by their natural senses. The kingdom of darkness provides occultic and demonic education, producing sorcerers and wizards. The kingdom of God provides divine education, which produces sons of God with the manifest mind of Christ. <laughs> sons of God have a kingdom agenda. They need to advance the frontiers of the kingdom of God by sponsoring stewards to take charge of these institutions. Don't forget, we've already talked about the various institutions. And we said all the three con con uh, kingdoms are always in contention. So the son of, sons of God with a kingdom agenda need to advance the frontiers of the kingdom of God by sponsoring stewards to take charge of these institutions. Why? Why is this? Praise God. The Bible tells us that the heavens belong to God. The heavens of the heavens belong to God. But the earth he has given to us. Praise God. God is a spirit. He cannot operate in the form of a human being. And that's why our Lord Jesus Christ was sent in the first place to come in the body of flesh to come and set a template of leadership for us. Sea words, who by virtue of their training and spiritual maturity have already been found faithful, will be the obvious choice. Sea words, by virtue of their training, know that there will be contention from the kingdom of darkness and that of man. But stewards have been prepared. Stewards have attributes of submission, discipline, wisdom, discretion, and accountability. They know that they have to account for their time, their treasure, and their talents because they are God-given. Stewards are battle-ready because they have been clothed with the armor of God, Ephesians 4. Ephesians 6.10, please. Ephesians 6.10. Ephesians 6.10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Continue, please. Put on the old armor of God. Can we be fast with this? Put on the old armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Go on. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, 
against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Praise God. See what's know how to deploy the mysteries of the kingdom. Because they know that the battle is not carnal. 2 Corinthians 10.4 2 Corinthians 10.4 please. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Continue please. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. What are we talking about here? We're talking about thoughts. Thoughts are powerful. Thoughts are spiritual. Thoughts determine destiny. And that's why the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. The Bible also has, advises us in Philippians 4, 8 to have good thoughts. Stewards remain committed to the kingdom till the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the living Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, Pastor Bakari. Um, I'd like to invite Elder Julius. Our time is really fast spent to take the discussion session. Amen. Let's put our hands together for him. Praise the Lord. Pastor Bakari, thanks a lot for your presentation. There was something that happened when he began to make his presentation after he laid out the three theaters in which the kingdom spirit operates. The personal theater, then the church, and then the body of Christ. The very first scripture that he cited was Matthew 6, 33, in which he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. But it was very unfortunate that it was only Pastor Ladi who clapped when he cited that scripture and said that when people step into leadership, that they have to have that focus. You remember, you were the only one who clapped. That is very important. But anyway, we we'll come back to that. Let's call our panelists up. We have uh, Pastor Chu, Chu De Igwe kindly come up. We have Pastor Olaolu Oladosun, please come back. We have Pastor Sam Taiwo kindly move up. We have Deke Mora, please move up. We well, have Pastor Iberoku, please come up. We well, have Pastor James, and finally, Deacon Wale Oshinawa, please come up. Please come up. Again, we economize on time as they come up. I refer back to what he said, and pastor was the only one that clapped. It's important to always get the first thing right. The reason is because, ah, we have just one question. I guess more come. So, the reason is because I once said in our men's uh, meeting on um, the Anthony campus, about the story that illustrates this idea of seek ye first one thing that matters and everything follows. There was a Jewish man who was very wealthy and godly. So he had only one son. 
and he sent him to Jerusalem to attend a rabbinical school just so he would learn the ways of God so that by the time he had died he was sure that his son would also die righteously but unfortunately when the son got there things were going on well unfortunately news came to him that his father was dead and not just that his father was dead he left a will because the man didn't have a lot of time before he died he quickly scrambled the will and he said upon my death let my only son choose just one thing that belongs to me and every other thing we go to this my faithful servant just one thing that belongs to me and every other property we go to this my faithful servant and what happened when the news came to the boy he was very agitated and so as he was walking along the street another rabbi saw him who wasn't his teacher and asked him what ailed him because he had a sad countenance and the rabbi actually said it was sorrowness in the heart that he suspected was the issue so the boy told him his unfortunate circumstances that he could only have one thing and every other thing would go to the servant and as the rabbi was going away he was heard saying oh ignorant one he doesn't know that his father is a very wise was a very wise man foolish one go back to the village choose the servant and every other thing that belongs to the servant will be yours so that's to let us know that when we come to leadership and thank you for saying that the most important thing is to seek the kingdom of God and thank you for clapping when he cited that we have all our panelists here so we go straight to our question since the kingdom spirit has been given to us why are we not manifesting the power of God in the body of Christ to the fullest I take that again since the kingdom spirit has been given to us why are we not manifesting the power of God in the body of Christ to the fullest oh we have only this okay oh, it has to go to you first <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> um, by way of illustration, if I leave this up to you, my tab, there's so many features inside of it that I have not learned to be able to use everything because I'm discovering it day by day. It's the same way with the word of God and the mysteries of the kingdom. The kingdom spirit is there. It's waiting to be activated. You need to study the same way our Lord Jesus Christ, we've said it, the same way our Lord Jesus Christ studied the scriptures to discover who he is. The same way we are supposed to study the word of God, meditate upon the word of God, have a renewed heart, change the way we think, praise God, and all these things will be made available. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the Lord. Well, Pastor Lalu, let me come to you. So, I read it again. Since the kingdom spirit has been given to us, why are we not manifesting the power of God in the body of Christ to the fullest? Our pastor has given some answers. Is it that these things he pointed out are not taking place in the body of Christ today? Or do you think there are ways we should engage them just so that we have more results? Praise the Lord. Okay, I, I personally think it's a, it's a blanket question and um, we cannot, we can't blanket it and say that the power of God is not available in the body of Christ. The power of God is available in the body of Christ. Um, there are people that... <laughs> see the power of God manifest. You know, so I, I think the question is either directed to yourself and say, why am I not seeing the power of God in my life? You know, or maybe your, your environment, I don't know. Um, so 
I think what Pastor Bakari says will apply to you. You could have a machine and not know about it. You could buy an iPhone and all you know is how to make calls. You need to learn every other function on the phone to be able to make use of it. And sometimes you need to go to people who know how to make use of it to learn how to make use of it. Because if you surround yourself with people that don't know how to make use of it, you say, nobody knows how to make use of it. You know, so <laughs> you need to go and find somebody that knows how to make use of it to teach you how to make use of it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let me... Na Sorry, you will come in. Okay, he said that that question should go to our personal selves first. Please remember that the major handle we have gotten from this conference is that we ought to activate the mind of Christ. Therefore, if we are not seeing this and he says we should direct the question to our personal selves, do you think, my dear pastor, that we are actually doing as much as we should do to activate the mind of Christ in our lives? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I think, uh, first of all, we have to get things right. If the foundation be removed, what can the righteous do? The most important thing is to get the foundation right. If we go to uh, the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 3, it says, Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect in the flesh? I, I think the most important thing for us to do is to start strong in the spirit and finish in the spirit. You cannot activate the mind of Christ if you are not in the spirit. You have to start from the spirit and finish in the spirit. The spirit and the flesh was. So the first thing to do is to have our foundation right to be able to activate the mind of Christ. If you don't have that foundation right, it will be impossible, extremely difficult for you to activate the mind of Christ. Thank you very much. You know, yesterday being the first time we came, there was a very glorious case that Pastor Ladi cited. It was so glorious in my estimation because it was very instructive on how to activate the mind of Christ. We come to that, but we take the next question, which is, well, basically theological. And so, our mommy will direct it to you. What is the difference between the body of Christ and Holy Communion? <laughs> You know, we thank those who ask questions. Because when they do ask questions, we know the internal workings of their mind. And usually, any question somebody asks is not restricted to that person. There are other people who also have that. And so when you ask any question, you are helping us know also that some other people who didn't ask, you are doing what other people didn't ask. And that's why we are very grateful. So, mommy, tell us. What is the difference? Ah, okay. Mommy wants to comment on the first one. And after that, you will take this other one too. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, the, question, that, the last question was, why are we not manifesting the power of God? And I want us to, well, I identify with uh, Pastor Laulu's conclusion that it's a blanket question. And then I want to say that the reason why we are here, we, we should not lose sight of, is that we are being taught how to activate the mind of, of Christ. And when we, manage, when we activate the mind of Christ, then we will manifest mm. the power of God. <laughs> Praise the Secondly, why are we not manifesting? The main reason is that we are not taking the word of God seriously. And the um, Jesus statement in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things will be added unto you. 
we are not adhering to that either. We are not seeking the kingdom of God first. And for us to seek the kingdom of God first, we have to have the mind of Christ. And then for us to manifest the power of God, we have to go along God's own principles. It's, you know, in Hebrews we are told that God rewards those who diligently seek him. We are not seeking him. How do we seek God? Many of us don't read our Bibles. You can't learn about God from what you hear other people say. You have to learn about God from what God tells you. Those who come to talk to us is because they have a relationship with God. And they are teaching us so that we too can go and have a relationship with God, hear from him, talk to him, and receive from him. And then we are able to bless others. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The essence of this gathering, I want us to realize, I, I would say it's the only one, but that when we leave here, we are to go and manifest the power. And then we should take note of all the processes that are being laid out. The number one is seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yeah. And there's no way you can seek the kingdom of God or know his will and, f and do his will without reading the word. The word of God has been relegated to the background. Whereas is the life of the, of the Bible and is the life of the Christian. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, thank you. I'll still, I'll still uh, uh, give you the second question. You know, when I said that when people ask questions, it's representative of what's <laughs> And the internal workings of other people's mind. We got another question here, which is alike. You can also visit us online at www.lwuc.org or be our friend on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Living Waters Unlimited or follow us on Twitter at LWUC or at Oracles or you can watch us on YouTube youtube.com slash living waters unlimited church we proclaim blessings on all our friends and partners for supporting this outreach